Well, hi, I'm Larry Totsky, and this is View from the Pew. And I'm here today with Susan Teague. And Susan, thank you so much for doing this with me today. Thanks for inviting me. Um, you have a pretty interesting ministry within our church. You do a number of things, but the ministry I'm thinking about is all about getting things organized. Yes. Share about that a little bit for us. Um, I love to organize things. I like to, uh, things to be in order. I don't know. I don't know. It, yeah, that's one of my favorite things to do. So I, um, in my spare time between foster kids, have asked to help organize things at church. And it turns out that um, church buildings can become places of unused items, some, some good, some not so good. So, um, and just kind of a haphazard organizational system. So I've had fun prior to COVID going through nearly every closet in the church and um, rooms and spaces and, and tidying them up and getting rid of stuff and, and kind of uh, brainstorming how we could best use the spaces. Our church space is pretty limited and small, but we have a lot of, um, a lot of things that we do out of this church. So how to best um, utilize the space that we have and make, make the most of it so that the most people can um, really enjoy the space we have. Yeah, I, and I really appreciate that. I'm, I'm one who likes things organized yeah. too, but I may be not one necessarily to go and do it. You know, I yeah. live through the mess a little bit and I say, all right, it's time to clean things up. But you, on the other hand, have taken the proverbial bull by the horns. Yeah, <laughs> I would have to say it's easier to do it somewhere else than at your own it home, probably for is. sure. <laughs> yeah, it probably is. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, today, as we come to talk about what uh, Pastor Jeremy's message was about uh, last Sunday, uh, I thought it was really, really timely, given everything that's going on in our yeah. world and our lives right now. Yeah, God's pretty awesome that way. Yeah, I think yeah. he is, yeah. Um, and just to uh, remind people, let me just read the first verse of the passage uh, that was before us. It's from Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse 25, and it says, Jesus talking, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? And then he went on to talk about the birds, and the flowers, and how they don't worry, and so forth. And, and Jeremy then uh, shared that message through three points that he had. And the first point that he made was, worry is useless. And I'm interested how you reacted to that point that worry is useless. Um, when hearing him talk through that, I, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, worry um, doesn't really accomplish much. I was at a Bible study a number of years ago where somebody made the little joke, um, I must, my worrying must have paid off because nothing I worried about came true. Um, and that just reminds us how, how much time is wasted um, worrying for things that weren't meant to be. And um, so I, I, that, that point made sense to me. Your point made sense. Yeah. 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 But, you know, uh, while it might be useless, it's pretty easy to do oh, sometimes, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah, for sure. So the, the second point that Jeremy made was that worry is inappropriate. Yeah. And uh, how did you react to that? Um, that point really stuck, stuck out to me, and I thought, inappropriate? How is it inappropriate? Nothing was said that was um, inappropriate. But then, then as, I, as he explained it, and he said that it is our, our desire to control a situation, our desire to play God in that situation, and that, that really struck me. Um, that in trying to worry about things that are outside of our control, it's, it's, it's not what God had intended for us to try to manage. There are things we do have to manage and figure out. When we worry about things outside of that, we're trying to play God, and that's inappropriate. He deserves all of our, um, all of our attention and all of our um, uh, efforts. And so... Um, 
That, that really stuck with me for this passage, that that was a new way to think about worry as inappropriate. Um, <clears throat> Jeremy said there that nature speaks to us through creation, and that helps us to process worry. He said the birds and the flowers don't worry. Mm -hmm. They live in the present. Mm -hmm. And um, God's grace cares for the past, and his sovereignty cares for the future. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really interesting. God's grace takes care of whatever stuff went on in the past. Yeah. And his sovereignty takes care of the future. Yeah. And I'll tell you, there's some future things that, quite frankly, I'm a little worried about right now. And um, I hope God's sovereignty is, <laughs> is uh, on the ball. Yeah. And that is that high view of God, knowing that as God is sovereign over all things, all creation, all leaders, all, all nations, all powers, um, and having a high view of God knowing in our heart, knowing fully that he has control over this. There may be some bad outcomes. There are some human sin that will have some real consequences, but how wonderful to not have to worry about what, what God has promised and what will be the final final result. Yeah, I think it's important for us to realize that, that God's sovereignty a lot of times, and for almost all of us, includes some unpleasant things in our lives. Yeah. And, uh, and it, that's part of life. And the Bible is clearly, uh, it clearly points that out. So it doesn't mean that, you know, as long as I trust in God's sovereignty, everything will be good and I will be totally healthy and have everything I want and all right. of that. Right. But I will be in his will. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes me think of, the sovereignty makes me think of um, sanctification as well. The process of becoming more like Jesus and, and the pointing out of our sins and the faults and the working through and, and having those consequences come up. But hopefully learning through, through those consequences um, to, to have our high view of God and to look towards him for yeah. Yeah. Or the challenges that come up. I agree. Yeah. Third point. Yeah. Third point was worry is misguided. Yeah. How did you react to that? Again, that kind of went with the useless. And I thought, yeah. I mean, if, if we're keeping that high view of God, if, we're, if we believe that he is creator and that he has all things in his sovereign control, then worry is misguided that we have now looked at our problem and the, and the situation around it, and we're not looking towards God um, to see that he is in control of all things. So I, again, I, I really thought of uh, the useless, sure, I could see that misguided, yeah, but the inappropriate just really struck me, yeah. I thought that as they were put together, they were a great yeah. way to just look at this passage and take all three of those examples mm -hmm. and draw them together all about worry. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I thought that those were um, a great three words to describe um, what Jesus is trying to get us to understand about worry, that it doesn't add a single day to our life. Yeah, that's it. right, yeah. So, so getting to some specifics, if I may, you have a husband, Robbie, who... Uh, is a, is works for the sheriff's department. He's yeah. a deputy sheriff. Yeah. Um, that can be a dangerous job. Yeah. Do you worry? I don't. Um, many years ago, uh, when our son had first turned, uh, just turned one, um, Robbie was on his way to work as an electrician and was in a really terrible car accident. Um, he could have, maybe should have died. God protected him, and, and it was very clearly evident that God had protected him in that situation. Um, I didn't even, I was kind of a sleep-deprived mom. I didn't even pay attention that he had left for work. It never occurred to me that that would be the last day I would see him, um, and I'm so thankful it wasn't. Um, and in coming through that and seeing God's purpose for that, and then as his career changed and he became a, a deputy and and all of the worry that comes with that. I think having gone through that situation before of, of nearly losing him and seeing that God 
had protected him, that helps me to trust him that every day that he goes to work, that God will protect him no matter the outcome. Uh, I'm not just saying that he's in a perfect little bubble, that nothing bad will happen to him, but I do not worry about him and God's perfect plan for why he's there when he's there. That's really cool. I, yeah. I don't know how the spouse of someone who's in a position like that, and there are tons of positions where people put their lives on the line every yeah. day. And if their spouse or their kids or whomever were to worry about them all day, their life would be miserable, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, man. I'd just be a giant ulcer, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah. so, too. Like, there's just, yeah. there's no way to go through that well. Um, and I am thankful um, to, to know God and to be able to trust him with Robbie's safety each day. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Uh, anything else that you would like to mention about worry and how it relates to you and your family and your life? Um, yeah, I was, I was thinking about this in relationship to our kids and the foster kids that we have um, had through our house. Um, and, and yesterday was actually the anniversary of our very first foster kid coming to us four years ago. Mm. Um, and just how God has changed that. And, and there are bouts of times where worry comes up and fear creeps in and, and the uncertainty and the unknown. Um, I can't say that it's, that doesn't happen. Uh, that's definitely happened, but um, just letting those things, letting go of those things, because as Jesus had said, it, um, it doesn't add a day to your life in worrying, um, and to really be present in the moment, even as Jeremy was saying, uh, grace for the past, sovereignty for the future, but, but to really enjoy the present time with the kids that are in our home right now. Yeah, that's, that's great. And by the way, thank you for being foster parents. That's something that not everybody can do. It is challenging. I'm sure it but is. But God gives you, God equips you for, for those, those situations, for sure. That's great. So. Um, the antidote that Jeremy gave for all of this was a passage that is yeah. meaningful in our household. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, and mm -hmm. all these other things will be added unto you. Yeah. And I think that goes back to what I said about that high view of God. Rather than looking down at your situation and, and where you need to step next or what the worry and anxiety of it, to, to look up to, to know that God has all control, uh, to seek him first, you, ca you can't worry about those things that are out of your control if you are seeking him first. And so that um, you can't remove something without replacing something. And so in order to remove that fear, you have to yeah. seek, seek his kingdom. And, and in doing that, you've replaced that space is filled with his kingdom um, and, and all the other things God takes care of. So. And you're living proof. <laughs> so far, anyway. So far, yes. <laughs> Not, yeah. not perfect by any means. <clears throat> no, but, none of us are perfect, but for sure. Th that sanctifying work of God drawing you to him and seeing how he has protected and provided and drawn you closer to him through challenges and mess-ups and all of that um, just builds your faith, builds your trust in him um, so that the next time a fear or a worry comes, it may not have as much of a hold or as long of a hold uh, on your life. Well, I think that's a great way to end our conversation this well, morning. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> this has been good. Yeah. Thanks, Susan. Yeah, thank you.